Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Your co-host, Rich Gear here as well. It's uh, kind of been a little while, Doug. It's kind of kind of fun to be back back doing this. And we have a special guest here, Dan Jansen. Mm -hmm. And his wife, Teresa, is in the audience all the way from South Sudan, right? That's right. Oh, he's got a topic of uh, very interesting. Doug, what do we want to call the show? Well, we're going to talk about how uh, evolutionary ideas create human misery. And uh, <laughs> some of the things that uh, Dan has really dug up here is uh, how the, the church and the culture uh, has uh, bought into uh, certain evolutionary ideas that uh, bring about uh, disaster in, in terms of uh, human suffering and human, well, human misery, right? Human misery, yes. I knew that's what he was trying to say, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah human misery. Well, Dan, how did you want to, you want, I want you to lead into this thing because many things that evolution has, has preconditioned us to, to believe. And as we start moving away from Christian principles and Christian values, we find it much easier to, to accept uh, extreme positions in the, in, you know, an environmental movement where the environmental movement should be helping us steward resources but when it turns itself around and starts to say hands off of management leave everything in a pristine form and human human interaction with the environment always it produces a, a blight condition um, as if as if management is impossible um, to and, and you start and you start thinking of well we really don't want human flourishing we want we want um, the environment in its pristine state to be to be what we classify as flourishing then then a lot of things can go wrong and it can lead us down the path of human mis misery well what, I, what disturbs me as much as anything is how some of this thinking you know has infected the church okay mm -hmm. we should be talking about stewards stewards of of the of the spiritual culture mm -hmm. and we're not doing that very properly in a lot of respects i mean yeah there are some churches that are fighting this war and that war but it's like putting out brush fires as opposed to getting into the real heart of things i think you you had a thing that really was kind of neat that i thought how the church is off a dime genesis 215 but 128 mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about that for a second because because it's a the difference between like watching over or whatever and then one is one actually is like it's subduing and I mean, there's there's a whole a whole lot of concepts involved in these different things in Genesis, but they'll talk about one aspect of it, but not the other part of it. When when it comes to Genesis um, one twenty eight, we're 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 given some some commands or some or some uh, mandates there. Um, number one, to be fruitful and multiply, and you can see that being completely undermined around the around the world as if as if there's some kind of scarcity or Malthusian scarcity that uh, that too many humans are going to are going to overwhelm the capacity of the earth to to provide for the you know for the uh, ability of man to sustain himself and then you have you have also the the mandate or command to subdue or to reign or rule um, and this brings the connotation of of a management or a control um, of the of the environment, um, to and the idea that we can improve the environment to bring human flourishing, we can transform the environment um, and make and make all the wonderful things, the cornucopia of opportunities that can come from that transformation um, that that we have experienced in the last several hundred years. All these things we, you know, people don't have to be, um, you know, slaves. People don't have to enslave one another to to have flourishing, flourishing. You know, take advantage of each other. Everybody can have a chance at human flourishing. Uh, even the poorest of the poor can move in the direction of human flourishing. So, so that's that's one aspect of it. Then if you go to Genesis um, two fifteen. Uh, well, we're commanded to to work or to till. There, there's the various aspects aspects that are that are that are that are implied here. Um, but if you if you if you go to a more obscure interpretation of that of that word, 
that, that means to work or to till or, or to cultivate. People take that, extreme environmentalists can take that to mean serve. And so, and so they, want, they want mankind to be, to be serving the earth or of subservient or under the, the level of the creatures. And, and it's completely in contrast to the idea that um, we're to subdue, reign, rule, control, um, or, or to, to steward which which is which is um, definitely the you know the the clear picture of what of our interaction with the with the world um, and the things that God has created. What we're looking for, uh, really to do is to uh, figure out what the biblical model should be mm -hmm. in terms of being able to uh, uh, take care of the environment because uh, taking care of the environment uh, is indeed. A biblical thing to, that we should be doing. Right. We're not saying that it's uh, uh, environmentalism is uh, necessarily bad. What we're talking about is the extremes of environmentalism where all of a sudden we are now worshiping the Mother Earth mm -hmm. and we are using uh, terms uh, uh, such as Mother Nature and uh, we're going to serve the Earth and we're going to uh, we had it's like the Gaia concept. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all, all part of a this a whole animistic uh, uh, nature thing. We have all this nat natural things that that becomes our God, and I I see this as being used against um, the concept of uh, cultivating and farming, and uh, and uh, actually you know, putting into production. Uh, good things to eat and to be able to then uh, bless other people and uh, you, you've observed uh, many cases Dan where uh, things have not gotten much beyond subsistence farming in in the South Sudan and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're uh, seeing uh, the results of in terms of uh, negative influence of uh, of uh, extreme environmentalism caused by evolutionary thinking. If we're not f fulfilling the command to um, steward or to bring uh, transformation to the, in, to the environment, to bring human flourishing, to, to till, to cultivate, to, to, to work um, the, the earth, and utilize the resources that God has given us and transform them um, into into not only things to eat but um, but uh, you know an, an abundance of different products that that make our life uh, easier and free up time so that we can spend more time you know blessing others or serving others uh, and solving problems that, that plague mankind. Um, this is this is what what God has given us, uh, you know, to do out of our own unique gifts, <coughs> abilities, and the talents. But when people are kicked back and say, "Oh, um, resources are are um, are scarce, and therefore I've got to go raid resources from from a neighboring tribe or or the people traveling down the road raid, you know, or what thieves do." Um, and they see it as as um, almost like a zero sum game, where where resources are limited. So I've got to go out and take something from someone else, or they might say um, we've got to vote in the transfer of resources. And because people have exploited us, anytime work is used, people are exp people are exploited. So then they say, okay, we've we've got to vote in these transfers and take take from their from the rich to give to the poor, kind of the Robin Hood mentality. When, when actually, um, the proper way is that it, that it is backed up by Christianity is that everybody has a chance to to bless one another through mutually beneficial exchanges of goods and services, and and to you know, use your unique gifts, gifts and abilities and talents to to bring blessing to others. You know, you're talking about altruism, right? Mm -hmm. Altruism is the concept of that uh, there's enough resources abounding 
in, in God's creation mm -hmm. to the point where uh, there's uh, enough to go around. Uh, God has uh, built this world in such a way, if you give away from yourself, you will also reap a benefit from, mm -hmm. from that uh, giving attitude. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so uh, I, I sort of uh, uh, seen this by accident, where one of the things I've been doing is giving away copies of my book. Well, I keep getting people giving me books all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is that what you uh, uh, give away from yourself, that's what you uh, get in return. And, and uh, you know, I'm seeing that happen in my life where God is really uh, helping me uh, uh, overcome certain uh, handicaps now that my wife is gone. Uh, but uh, God has uh, blessed me with a lot of resources to uh, to bless other people with, and so it's a uh, good thing to uh, get this concept that there is a God who cares for His environment, He cares for this earth, He cares for the, every creature that He's created, mm -hmm. and uh, and so uh, if you have that perspective and that uh, we're not just uh, evolved from the dust and uh, you know, we're uh, pond scum that uh, just came up from the uh, through from go to use through the zoo then uh, you, once you get this perspective that God is uh, the overarching uh, reason why you're, you are here uh, it, uh, it brings a whole little bit of different perspective that is a blessing to everyone. Well, I'm, this, you've got a point here that I, I wanted to bring up too. It's kind of interesting because it kind of goes along with what you're saying. The evolutionary mindset is, is that basically we come out of, uh, yeah, from goo, yeah, goo to you to the zoo, goo through you, the zoo to you, whatever, that, that old expression. It's the idea you evolved upward from all these, that everybody is basically the same. Mm -hmm. or, or even worse, we're an intruder. Mm -hmm. We're an outsider. We're imposing our will upon mm -hmm. upon upon all the animals and the, the nature, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't be doing that. Okay, that's not the Christian worldview at all. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think of evolutionary concepts. Years ago, I remember we, we look at the time frame of, and you know, we're this little speck at the very end of this 4.6 billion year long age type thing, and you know, we're we're insignificant in the scheme of things. We're just basically we're we're basically an accidental burp on the end of. Mm -hmm you know, some cosmic gases that came out over millennia and eons and billions of years of time. Where the biblical concept is, no, we are made in the image of God himself. Mm -hmm. And he created us to steward, to watch over, and to rule over the creation. Not to exploit it for its, for its own, for only selfish means, but to make, like you said, make the world a better place, not only for yourself, but it turns out it makes it better for everybody else. Mm -hmm. People today, in a lot of respects, have looked at the United States for a lot of things because we had a country based on the Judeo-Christian worldview mm -hmm. and we're fast throwing that away. Mm -hmm. And other cultures that have not never had it, there's very little infrastructure, they're, 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 not, they're barely able to help themselves, let alone help other people. We've been able to help many, many other people. But now, guess what? We're now $30 trillion in the hole now because we're not helping we're trying to help others. We can't even help ourselves anymore, because mm -hmm. as I believe, it's a direct causal relationship with throwing off the Judeo-Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. Okay, we become ourselves intruders, interlopers. Mm -hmm. The environmental thing is is a, is a, is a cult. It's a it's a secular cult, basically, and it's the idea that you're you're uh, at best a part of nature, at worst you're an alien. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're you're just you're an interruption, uh, or or like I say, an interloper to try to destroy that. That's all evolutionary concept. Basically, you, you're insignificant, but now you're now you're an enemy. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's always interesting. People are promoting that, never include themselves in that. Don't let your ecology mess up your theology. Does it make sense to add pagan, evolutionary, atheistic, animist? evil eco ideas to Christianity. Ask God for discernment. There is a Christian mandate to manage the environment God created, but there are many extreme ideas about environmentalism that are not godly and will contribute to human misery. 
Are you on the slippery slope? Here is some signs. Do you use terms like Mother Nature? Nature knows best. Ask nature for guidance. Connect to the earth. Reintegrate with nature. Sacred earth. Sacred creatures. Are you worshiping the creature and the creation rather than the creator? That never turns out well. Read Romans chapter 1. Now that you understand that uh, these things, these particular terms, are uh, something that you have to watch out for in, in your uh, culture, in your environment, in your church, uh, watch to see if this comes up in any of the conferences you t attend. But if you have uh, political conferences or any um, church conferences that you attend, see if any of these uh, things that I just mentioned here uh, are coming up as uh, ideas and watch out for them because they're they're not biblical. They're um, they are um, an indication that you're buying into something that's really not true. Yeah, it's been a very uh, uh, I don't in some respects fairly quick, but it's been going on. Really, I think I think uh, Darwin in his philosophy was some of the beginnings of, of some of this stuff. Well, it happened actually a little bit earlier than him, probably the, the, the Enlightenment period of time is when things started really changing. Um, but it was kind of a slow, but almost it seemed like an inexorable progression of this, what's happened over the last 150, 200 years. It's been really, really um, uh, disturbing when you see that the worldview that it had improved made the world, in fact, I have a, our friend, Dr. Jerry Bergman, he said mm -hmm. something always, he was, he was uh, raised by a mother who was a Jehovah's Witness and a, and a father who was an atheist. Mm -hmm. And he had a scientific bent, okay, Dan? So he, he wanted to basically, he, 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 he subscribed to atheism. Until he began to look at everything that you can see in the world that has benefited outside people. He began to look, it was all Christian based. Mm -hmm. From Salvation Armies, to universities, to hospitals, mm -hmm. to charities, to, to all of this stuff, from intellectual, to, to, to even the ability that to, to doing the, the, the graining, the harvest, it wasn't Malthusian. It was the idea that God put this planet out here to be to be harvested and, and we could build it up and there and there's always an, there's always gonna be enough to do yeah, even in this world that's broken. Mm -hmm. Even the world has fallen mm -hmm. and even though we have to work by the sweat of our brow, it's possible by utilizing his principles mm -hmm. that we can make the world a better place to live. Right. Where you see the cultures that don't all they do is steal from other people, mm -hmm. or they barely subs they're, they're subsistent living. Mm -hmm. um, even even we, we 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 love like the native peoples in our country in our country. Now they're they're promoting them and it's a wonderful thing. And there's good things about them. Some of the best things were when they actually had uh, some of their remembrances of the Genesis record in their own culture. But mm -hmm. but they, most of the Native Americans lived on subsistence level, mm -hmm. and they barely lived past forty. For the most part, you know, because they were in the winter time, they were starving. I mean, you know, and like you might have been down south, might have been better off. But I, it just, the point is, there's good things about every culture, but when you don't have that Christian basis, you don't have a. It's like how, how science science got developed. Okay, the idea that there was a God who created order and that He's good mm -hmm. that gives you faith and hope to produce something that's beyond yourself. Even if you don't do that. All you're doing is grasping for yourself. That's all you do. And all the cultures that do that, I'll tell you what, Protestant Christianity made England, Europe, America, and Canada what they were. Mm -hmm. But now, those, all those places have now rejected those things. And you see what's going on. Like Europe versus virtually a second or third world becoming third world. They, they got these vestiges of culture, mm -hmm. but they don't have anything much to show for it. And we're going, we want to go that same, we're just basically throwing off all the stuff that made, made it. it's not really political, it's not merely economic. Those are fringe benefits. It's the viewpoint that God is good and he makes, and he, and he created us in his very image. We are not pond scum, you know? We're not goo, we're not, we're, we are made in his very image. And he created a world for us. Yes, broken, fallen, but still with goodness to be found in it if we subscribe to his tenets, mm -hmm. his worldview. And we, we want to throw that off. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's, it's hard for me to understand that. But we talked about, remember we talked about Voltaire and, and we talked about uh, who, who, uh, Thomas Paine? Mm -hmm. Even on their deathbeds, they couldn't reject mm -hmm. 
They couldn't reject the fact that they'd rejected God. Mm -hmm. Voltaire, it's reported, I don't know whether it's a true story or an apocryphal story, but I may have heard it many times. Even on his deathbed, he was seeing, seeing visions of hell, and he couldn't repent. Mm -hmm. He's the one that said, yeah, my, my Bible will be replaced by my writings in, in, uh, in 50 years. Mm -hmm. and, then his, and then apparently his, his house got used for a while. I don't know if it still is or not, but it was 20 years ago I read this, but his house was a Bible publishing place for a while, you know? In his writings, hardly anybody remembers unless you study history. But my point of it is, is that we have been spending these periods of time, and why do you think that is, Dan? Why, why, why do you, I mean, why, or Doug, either one of you, why do you think that we have something good? Why do we want to commit cultural, political, economic, and spiritual suicide? Over and over and over again, cultures have done this. Why do you think that is? Well, there's a complacency that sets in that's in in the, in the um, arena of, of abundance and, and luxury and, and people forget about God because they don't have to de they, they uh, don't have to depend on on that relationship with with God and they and they become prideful and think oh we do this ourselves and this mm -hmm. is not attributed to this is not attributed to God and and people people lose those values and those virtues and they lose the trust um, a society has to be based on trust and virtues, virtues to to move on. Move on. If that's displaced by by greed and selfish ambition, and 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 people no longer governed by a relationship with with God and desiring to please please God in their actions, then and they're and they're moving the direction of of um, you know survival of the fittest, uh, might makes right, um, selfish ambition. Then, then the society is going to decay and 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 implode in on itself. Now, our society is really uh, riddled with fear. Uh, mm -hmm. Fear has become the whole uh, paradigm of uh, what's going on, and we uh, find out that uh, if you are afraid that you're going to uh, disrupt the whole environment by your uh, actions, um, uh, your personal actions, so then it's going to be a uh, something that you are really paralyzed and uh, really doing anything uh, uh, about it or any any scientific uh, research that you need to do to make the world a better place mm -hmm. you're afraid that you're going to disrupt the whole environment uh, with the uh, genetic mutations which is really what's happening with this uh, virus you know oh, and, yeah. and if you look at uh, the whole um, uh, uh, the genetic uh, issues. We have uh, what Dr. Sanford calls gen genetic entropy, where mm, yeah. uh, it's uh, really uh, everything is going downhill, and uh, it's not uh, improving. But that's the opposite of what evolution uh, originally uh, had you uh, to believe. Uh, you, they thought that uh, everything uh, came about through evolution. And so that's uh, what we're actually experiencing in the culture uh, as a result of the evolutionary thinking is the de deterioration model where they're afraid that uh, this is going to disturb the uh, environment that was put brought about by natural uh, selection. Uh, and, but there was really no natural selection. It was brought about because there was a loving God who created this uh, universe and put it together and, and the, the uh, uh, Genetic mutations are just uh, a part of the, what's destroying that. Yeah, I think there's also, a, and this goes along with what you two are saying, but there's a spiritual component that instinctively gravitates toward the bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it, it, to me, there's something so in, intrinsically, it needs to be salvaged through salvation. It needs to be, the Holy Spirit needs to come in and give you a revelation of who he is because our nature through the fall Doug, we gravitate towards bad why do we always why do we always eat a candy bar than, a, than an apple I mean it's kind of like it's like we always go for things that aren't healthy I know I know better than that but I'm saying the point of it is the same thing with bad things things that the Lord has told us are bad he doesn't tell us it's to be a killjoy they usually cause harm and culturally we're doing the same thing we we have this all this there's it becomes complacent there's fear of course, God is not the author of fear. 
the right. devil is. Okay, we know that, and and all, and and basically self-centeredness and self-righteousness and or self-complacency, whatever you think. Basically, oh, you should be like God. You, it, it's all done on your own efforts. These are instinctive things that happen to us that we need to we need to get. That's a spiritual malaise that seems to rise up when things get maybe too easy. Um, it seems to be often times when things are hard when we actually do appeal, they call it trench warfare Christianity sometimes, mm -hmm. but you know, you appeal to God when things are really bad mm -hmm. because you realize there's no, you, you don't have any illusions mm -hmm. uh, that you're doing it yourself. Now right. speaking but, of trench warfare, Dan is a, a uh, missionary in South Sudan with oh, yeah. and his wife. We, and he is the one that is uh, putting together plans for that country to uh, bring about agricultural reform. Mm -hmm. where there is going to be uh, uh, biblically based uh, agriculture that uh, is uh, going to produ produce uh, crops that will be saleable and to put it in the market and to bring about your uh, a, a plan that it will actually transform that country. And uh, he's running up against these environmental concerns that uh, uh, destroy that whole plan and uh, and uh, say a, a word about that before we go. Well, yes, if, if we have um, Europeans or other people coming to do work there in South Sudan and they're bringing the wrong concepts, um, then it's reinforcing the animistic ideas um, that are very similar um, fear-based ideas that come out of animism are, are very similar to to the ideas that are coming from places places um, and people that are that um, don't have human flourishing as their primary value system and their value system is somewhere else uh, promoting pristine environments and and things things that are contrary to to um, human flourishing we all like a wilderness area but we don't want e the whole world to be a wilderness area <laughs> no so, well we have to uh, uh, leave you right now. to wrap it up but boys we'll see you next time on revolution against evolution